I'm satisfied with just the cottage below a little silver and a little gold but in that city where the ransom will shine I want a gold one that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never grow wander but walk the streets that are purest gold though often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophet my pillow is stone and though I find here no permanent dwelling I know he'll give me a mansion my own I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are pure press gold. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim. In search of the city, I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright city where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Hello and welcome to another presentation of Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church. As we are dealing with uh, our series, Heaven Knows, a study about heaven. I just want to um, remind us to keep our loved ones in prayer. At our church, we pray for Sharon Morris as she's going through recovery. Uh, we also pray for my wife, Lori, as she is approaching October 20th, which ironically is my birthday, but she has to have surgery on that day. And... Um, you know, we are seeing a whole lot of things in our nation, a lot of negative, negative things, but also some positive things as well. But also, I want to uh, send out a prayer for uh, America's president, Donald Trump, and the Trump family as they deal with COVID-19. And let's just focus on not only the things that are passing away, but the things that are eternal. My friends, as death comes for the believer, for those who are born again, victory comes. Let's not walk that other path, that wide path of destruction. Let's find that golden road as we seek the presence of God. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church. I uh, thank you for 
the opportunities that are brought to us to spread the word of God on Facebook with as much trials and temptations that gets brought to the internet, yet people are still hearing the gospel through it. Lord, uh, we just pray for uh, those who are in need of healing. Lord, we pray for our cities and our nation. Dear Lord, help us to overcome all these obstacles. Help us not to simply give up into victimhood, but to progress forward into victorhood. Lord, help us to arise, Lord, and win this spiritual battle. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And as we focus this week, we will be talking on the subject of angels as it relates to heaven. And one thing you have to remember is that when you are worshiping God, and even though I don't think that this is the perfect venue, I do think it's an opportunity, and it's an opportunity we're providing from the church to come into the presence of God. And when we come into the presence of God, we understand that there are angels all around when we stand on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Holy ground. Amen. Let's see here. And angels provide many different things. And one of which was the choruses that brought in the coming of our Lord Jesus. So let me see if I can find the passage. <laughs> All right, this is Angels from Realms of Glory. <laughs> Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. 
Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Mm. I forget if I had a note. Mm. All right. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm. So today we are speaking on the subject of angels. Angels specifically residing in the heavenly realm. Um, when we talk about the subject of angels, what's funny is that a lot of your more Protestant, especially Baptist types, don't like to talk too much on the subject. And that's quite ironic. And the reason why that's so ironic is because angels are throughout all the scriptures. In fact, in systematic theology, there is a division uh, into different categories, and one category of theology, classically, is called angelology. And some might even add a category of demonology, but angelology is this classic uh, study. You can't just look at one passage and get the whole uh, enchilada, so to speak. Uh, there, there's a great deal of uh, information that we have to process, and that's just from the usual Bible. Um, there are speculations of several religions, and so um, you know the uh, the Mormons might recognize an angel named Moroni, and the Catholics using uh, the Book of Tobit would argue for the angel of Raphael. Um, I think, um, don't think Islam had to use a different angel because they used Gabriel. But I could be wrong. There might be some other. There are some angelic creatures I know in the uh, book of Quran that's different. But nevertheless, um, so we, we have a, a huge topic and yet very little attention is paid to it. And the topic is too big because I'm focused on the big topic of heaven. So we're going to talk about angels in heaven. But we're going to hit some basic main points to kind of contemplate as we're going there. Now it says in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 16, For by him, and him is the Lord Jesus, by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions, or principles, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And so we know, number one, angels are created beings. They are not eternal beings. That is where you might get mixed up into the worldview of pantheism or polytheism. And that can have a slippery slope that will eventually get you to paganism. But basically, the angels were created by God. Lord Jesus Christ is divine himself. Okay, he is God. All right. And I know there's a long discussion over theology proper, all right, and I'm not denying uh, 
that Jesus is one of the persons of the Trinity, but he is full in his deity, according to uh, Colossians 2, 9. And I might as well look at that since I'm right here at the page. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And God is, is the divinity, the substance of God. And so Jesus is for the God deity. Now, the angels are created beings, but also uh, they have lots of different offices and lots of different titles. Here in this verse, it mentions a couple things. It says thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers. Okay, and it talks about these invisible things. Now, the classic worldview in the Western world is what we call Newtonian. Okay, or it's the view of the cosmos. So it could be a cosmology thing. But basically, it is Newtonian, where we think of the way the universe operates, that we think, think goes through the laws of science. Either these were laws made chaotically for no apparent reason, and they don't know why they continue to work, or they were ordered like they are described to be, as laws by a lawgiver, and basically that these are mechanistic, that these forces just operate like any kind of machine, and therefore it just runs only as a machine. And Newton eventually uh, fathered in the worldview of deism, and so the deists believe that God started the world and then just kind of left it there. Well. Um, the uh, ancient Christians did not actually describe it this way. And some of these early astronomers, uh, especially Catholic astronomers, but some of these early astronomers, they talked about how these angels were powers. And so the powers are those that are operating these forces. So the universe, instead of operating like a machine, uh, or operating, like not operating at all, uh, or as an illusion or something, okay? Instead of those worldviews, it presents a universe that operates as a corporation, okay? Every worker is going according to plan, but they are individual workers. So, for instance, when you hear people who are like global warming and are alarmist, who are like, oh, the world is going to end in 11 years because we're not using, you know, uh, paper instead of plastic or some other natural means. Or we're eating, you know, we're not, let's see here, we're not, uh, we're eating too many animals, but then that doesn't make any sense because of the methane gas that causes global warming. <laughs> so, whatever. But basically, this idea is that, oh, the universe is just going to fall apart all of a sudden. Why? Because it's not being guided. Okay? So, so they don't believe that the universe is guided and they start coming up with these crazy conclusions. But yet, the Earth keeps on going. And so how does it keep on going? Because these are under the operation of um, personal corporation. And so they operate that way. They see things. When you look at space and you see a shooting star meteorite. Is it gravity that's pushing that meteorite? Or is it an angel? And you might think, well, that's just dumb. It's gravity. But what's making the gravity? How do you see gravity? You don't. You can see what gravity does. That's what gravity does. But as far as what that is, we don't really know. And so we have these forces operating through the ages. So you have powers, you have principalities, you have dominions, you even have orders and social structures, biological structures. Angels work behind the scenes on all sorts of things. And of course, now that we have a fallen world, we have fallen angels. Typically, it is believed that there was a fall of Satan and all the demons, and they used to be angels. Perhaps they even are the uh, Nephilim children of the angels. That's one theory. And that's just subject for another day. 
<laughs> but it's a different subject. But basically, um, you have the, these fallen angels, and so that provides the curses, okay? And these fallen angels were given permission because Adam had dominion over the earth and gave up that dominion, okay? By following his wife, by following a snake under that was actually Satan. And so basically giving the power and authority and recognizing the power and the authority of Satan, all Satan had to do is say, worship yourselves instead of God. All right, so that is one interesting aspect of it. There are many different forms of angels, and angels are kind of like a spiritual world of creation. We think of how man is different from the animals because of our spiritual awareness. Even psychologically, we have a uh, understanding of self that animals simply just do not have. They do have emotions, and you can see the emotions of an animal. But there's something immaterial that is like unto God that the animals just don't possess. And when we see the angel, we see the angel has the opposite problem than the animal. The, the animal is all flesh, while the angel is all spirit. And there are different in that spiritual world. And in previous lessons, I talked about heaven being like a dimension, so that if you were in heaven, it would be physical. When you're on the earth, the angels are able to spiritually come across the earth, but they're not in the physical realm. They would, they would need special permission from God to be allowed to go into the physical realm physically. Um, but as far as... Um, Spiritually, they are allowed to roam the earth uh, in a non-physical capacity. So, basically, um, there are, um, you know, obviously we've got the fallen angels and stuff, but you have uh, the, the cherubim, and then you have the seraphim, and you have uh, the four living creatures, which are probably the most powerful of angels. Uh, but they are, I mean, to me, I think they might be a different species, okay, of angel. There are also, uh, you know, Jesus rides in on a white horse. Obviously, that is a horse coming out of heaven. Um, and that does give credence to the idea of animals in heaven and stuff like that. I don't know if they'll be the same animals, okay, you know, just to be honest. But, you know, my Uncle Nathan, my great uncle, he passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, he said that, you know, if God's going to give him the desires of his heart, that he wants uh, his little chihuahua with him. And, you know, that little chihuahua didn't live but six months longer without her master. Um, but basically, I think it was Honeybun. But basically, um, you know, that's a good argument, honestly. I mean, maybe God's going to give us desires of our heart with those pets, the loved ones. Uh, maybe there is an, uh, animals in heaven. Because, after all, I kind of noticed that. There's also uh, some other creatures, especially in the new heavens and new earth. And there's all sorts of weird things. There are chariots that are coming out of heaven. Uh, you know, when you look at Ezekiel, it appears with these grand uh, wheels that it could be a, you know, spaceship. It could just be modern technology and choppers and helicopters. Or maybe it's just the chariots and weird wheels that come out of this dimension of heaven. Um, this being the case, angels are not eternal. They're not limitless. Their powers are beyond our powers. That is, unless we become glorified saints. Uh, the 24 elders kind of stand atop the angels. So, you know, um, that will be something which surpasses. And in general, upon the earth, there are orders of angels. Angels uh, celebrate order. So there are angels for good governments. Bad governments tend to be taken over by demons, but 
good governments have their angels. And uh, that would be those who execute justice. Marriage has, I believe, a sanctification and therefore an angelic protection. Children have an angelic protection. And um, uh, church, the church has angelic protection. So, you know, when we think about these things, this is kind of good to know and understand. But obviously, we don't have all the time in the world today. But let's go ahead and look at some other things. Um, yeah, in Job chapter 38, this is my theory. I believe that the angels were created on day four. could be earlier, but I do believe they were created at the same time as the creation week. But Job chapter, I believe it was 38, 4. Yeah, Job, asked, Job is asked by God, Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who stretched it, the lion upon it? He says, um, Whereupon the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars... And by the way, stars is symbolic of angels and of the passages. But it says, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So we know they're created by a day four. I think maybe it was on day four because of the connection. All right. So um, when we think about these, th there is a danger that we do have to worry about. And I think that... Um, when it comes to this danger, uh, that is the fact that these angels and, of course, the demons, as a result of the demons, that um, they often get worshipped, okay? They inspire all from people. Uh, in the Catholic Church, well, I know that there are um, statues made to angels, and they'll say that's a saint angel, Saint Michael, okay? Well, Michael's not born again. Michael's, a, Michael's not human. Michael was an angel. So, you know, there is confusion that happens, and therefore there is the worship of angels. And we have to stay away from that. That goes into paganism and demonic things. That'll get you far away from the gospel. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart, and you start following that path, well, that'll take you a path straight to hell. If um, you are truly born again and you start following that path, that will lead you to destruction and kill you. <laughs> okay? It's just not good. You don't want to go. Don't go there. Okay? But let's look at what Hebrews has to say. Kind of help us understand the difference between Jesus and the angels. Hebrews chapter 1. All right. We'll go with um, starting at verse 2 of chapter 1. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, that's Jesus, whom he hath appointed the heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So automatically, the Lord Jesus is a much higher rank than the angels. And it says... Um, being made so much better than the angels as he hath in, by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. You know, God did not begot the angels, he just created them. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, 
he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now, this passage makes no sense if you follow an interpretation made popular by Jehovah's Witnesses. Who knows, maybe another cult agreed, but basically they have this idea that Michael the Archangel is the same as Jesus. Makes no sense here, though. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels, he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with all the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And his vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies a footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits? Set forth the minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So we have all these limits, okay? The angels are not to be worshipped. When an angel made their presence in the Old Testament, a lot of the time, you would see people do this. <laughs> they would drop to the ground, almost like they were unconscious. They would just plummet as soon as they saw an angel. Many people would be so scared they'd have a heart attack. Okay? And so, you you know, the, the angel would try to calm them down and stuff if they reveal themselves that way. Now, sometimes angels do uh, sneak in in human form. I don't know if it's fully human form. It might be an image of a human, but nevertheless, they will sneak in in that form because if they go in full on, mm -mm -mm, nobody's standing around. You know, there was an angel in the Old Testament that killed 180,000 Assyrians. Okay, just wiped them all out. Now, um, it says, um, are they not all ministering spirits? These are servants of God. You know, there used to be a, a song in the 90s that said, what if God was one of us? You know, and at the end of the song, um, you know, it's like, well, nobody's praying to God anymore. He's going up to heaven all alone. Nobody calling on the phone, you know. And it was like Joan Osborne saying that. But basically, um, that's false. It's just flat out wrong. Why? Because besides the Trinity deal where you can kind of hang out with Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and they can kind of communicate there. You also have this host of angels, okay? And they are the servants of God. Other places, God is called the Lord of hosts. And the hosts are the, uh, you know, they're the celestial creatures, but basically the angelic realm. And they are the army of God. This is very important because. These angels would be worshipped by the pagan nations. And yet those spirits, if those were the spirits, could be the demonic spirits, but those spirits are the ones that adhere to the will of God. Okay, that's why the Lord of hosts, that he's the one. He's the true one. And all these others, these are just, you know, neat little spirits, but they're just spirits. And it says, um, Set forth ministering to them who shall be heirs of salvation. 
and the angels become the servants of the saints. If you are born again, you need to convert. Okay. And what does that mean? It means like if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe his gospel, that he is the only begotten son of God, that he is the lamb of God, that he is the divine Lord who was slain before the foundation of the earth, according to his predestined plan, that basically rose from the dead and ascended to the right hand of God, conquering all. If you would trust in him, you shall be saved. And yet, because all your sins have been paid for, some people kind of slip through the process. They've made a decision. But the problem is, is that the decision didn't really do a whole lot past that. They, they just said, okay, I'm a believer. Okay. Go monkeys. I'm a believer. You know, maybe y'all young people might do Shrek or something. But basically, even though they believe, they've not followed God. And so deciding not to take the next step, deciding not to be baptized, not to join the church, they're not experiencing the power of the kingdom. And they're not getting angelic protection. We have to submit to the Lord, and we have to submit and become part of his church. Now, some churches have problems because they're not quite obedient to God. But God loves us all. He'll save anybody who believes him. But there are consequences when we don't want to follow him. And so there have been born-again people who got saved. I was, as a child, I called myself a Christian, but not in the church. I truly believed in Lord Jesus. I asked him to save my soul. And I knew that he was the Lord, that he was the Son of God, all these things. And deeply believed. But there were things in my life that were still cursed because I hadn't gotten into covenant. You see, I assumed it was something natural that my parents were supposed to tell me to do it. Matt, go get baptized. No. Because it was a personal relationship. Okay. And so this is what we must do. We must take that step towards maturity. You know, you talk about wanting a blessed life. Don't, don't act like God owes you a single blessing in this life if you're not willing to follow him. You have to submit and bow down before him and become a disciple of Christ. And that must mean that you're willing to give everything. And when you do, that's when you gain everything. That's when you find the joy of living. That's when you find the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's when angels are watching out for you. These angels, they don't want to be worshipped. They don't want to be glorified. And when anything, they know what happens. Okay, they saw things with Satan and the enemies. And the difference is, is that while they don't get some of the chances to repent that we do, they were in the presence of God 100% of the time. And this points a little bit to their nature. But the angels of the Lord are in the presence of God. And God is love. God is full of joy in everything that we can ever hope for. Not just satisfying our fleshly needs. Satisfying the needs of our heart. And giving us a heart that needs the right things. Just like I said earlier, you could be in paradise, but if your heart is not there, it won't matter. There are people in the most exotic islands on this earth that have access to millions of dollars in jewelry and beautiful women or men, depending, and all these things in power and nobody can mess with them. And they end up just gunning each other down. Okay, they end up in death and blood and murder. 
in many of these parts of the world, the most beautiful exotic locations, the well, you know, exquisite food, and yet it's a living hell. Why? Because what you need is not the tropical sunshine, but you need an optical sun to shine. You need to see the Lord Jesus Christ and the light that he brings into your heart. Finally, let's turn to Revelation chapter 5. Let's see here. Verse 6 of Revelation 5. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And he, when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain, and thou hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made unto us our kings and priests, sorry, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. And the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. I remember singing a praise song once. Blessing and honor and glory and power. Blessing and honor be unto you, Lord, forever, forever. Amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Have you trusted in him? Have you followed him? Have you exalted him? testified, preached the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them about what angels wished they knew.